What's up everyone, Tom here from toolswithtom.com taking you through today the pivot table as part of our series on Excel for marketers. Really excited for this one today because the pivot table is going to open your eyes to a whole range of new things you thought were never possible in doing, let alone through uh, Microsoft Excel. So what the pivot table allows you to do is essentially be able to summarize data and be able to group data by commonalities in in the data, which allows for a lot more insights into larger data sets and to be able to then make a lot more kind of data-driven decisions as part of that as well. I've taken a really common example that we might see. This is a bunch of mock data I've got that would be transactional data. So if you're working with Shopify or if you're even just working with any kind of transactional data that you'll get from either your developers or from whatever system you're using, you'll end up with something very similar to this where you've got a bunch of different records. There's a lot of multiple email addresses in here and a lot of multiple things like categories, brands, dates and amounts. So what you could go through and say you wanted to work out who your most valuable customers are, it'd be a relatively difficult thing to do with all this data because there are those uh, duplicates in there as well. So you'd have to go through and find, you know, this user and then have a look. So if I have a look at him, okay, this one's only got one, but if I go at the next one, you can see that there's multiple purchases throughout here, I'd have to go through each of these and find those multiple purchases and then look to, you know, tie them all back together. But what the what the pivot table allows us to do is essentially be able to do that in bulk and be able to see everything in one go. So how we essentially go about using the pivot table is we first thing we need to do is ensure that in our top row that we have labels for all of our columns. If we don't have those labels, we will get an error in the pivot table and we won't be able to run it. So once we've actually then gone out and labeled our columns, the next thing that we want to do is to select all of this data. So you can do that by either going Command A or Control A and selecting all like that, or you can just select all of your columns by just dragging. Once I've got that, I go up to Insert, and then I click on Pivot Table. And now it's asking me what data I want to go about analyzing. And for this, you just want to leave that as is, providing you've first selected all of the data. So you can see it's got our range in here. Where do you want then the pivot table report to be placed? You want that to be in a new worksheet so you're not really getting clouded with lots of data in lots of places. So that's going to create a new sheet within your overall Excel worksheet. And so what we then need to do from here, you can see on the right that I've got what says here pivot table fields. So these are all of my column headings that we have over here. So brand, date, quantity, purchase amount. And they're now coming up as part of what we've got on the right here. So what I need to do is you can see down here, it's got four areas. It's got filters. So we're able to create filters based on the data in each of these columns. We can add columns, we can add rows, and we can add values. So we're going to start out very simply by just having a look at rows and I'll show you what rows allows us to do. So let's take one of these examples. Let's take brand. So if I click on brand and hold it and drag it down into rows, you can see here it's pulled in all of the different pieces of unique data that fill in from all of my transactions. So there's only one, two, three, four, five brands that are a part of that as well, and maybe some blank that don't have brands as well. And so for each of these, let's say I want to work something out. Okay, maybe the first thing I want to work out is how many purchases were there for each of these individual brands. And so to work that out, I might say, okay, well, the purchases, they relate to the email addresses. I can see that the email addresses are in each of the different ones and then are tying up next to the brands. So maybe I want to have a look then at the count of email addresses that also have uh, a particular brand in that same row. So what I would do is I would grab email, I would hold my mouse and click, and then drag that one into values. And now you can see as part of this one here that everything in this particular example, they're all balanced out. Each of them has a total of 200 uh, email addresses where that brand has been used. So why don't we try another one? Why don't we try product category instead? So I'm just going to take brand out 
and this time I'm going to drag in product category. Okay, and now you can see this is an example of where the product category and then how many essentially purchases we have for each of the product categories. So you can see, you know, posters, sandals, scooters, screen protectors, etc. So it gives you a really good overview then of what your most popular products are. And then you're able to then see how that, you know, relates to purchases. And some of the other things you can also do is using numerical data. So in, if, you, if we go back and have a look at my spreadsheet, I had purchase amount in here, which is the total purchase amount of the transaction. Now, what if I want to work out, okay, what are the most valuable product categories in terms of overall dollar amounts? I can go over to purchase amount, click on this, and I can drag this into my values as well. So now I've got two things in here. Now you can see here that these numbers are exactly the same. And the reason for that is a lot of times by default, the pivot table would just look at counting if there's an instance of purchase amount in each of these cells and it won't actually look at the, the numbers and the numerical data in there. But what you can do to actually do a sum and actually calculate how much as an aggregate each of these product categories has brought in terms of revenue, down over here where it says values, see where it says count of purchase amount. If I click on that and then I go to where it says value field settings, I can actually change what it's summarizing here. So at the moment it's summarizing by count, I could summarize by things like, you know, sum, average, max, the maximum purchase, the minimum purchase, range of different things you can use here. But let's just go ahead and use the sum. So we're going to say, all right, we want to summarize all of the values by adding them all together and providing that next to the product categories. So I'm going to click on OK. And now you can see that we have now a dollar amount in relation to each of the categories. So I can see watches, there were $50 of watches sold, there were $408 of shoelaces sold, <laughs> a very cheap scooter for $2.19, and uh, $134 for posters, and go through all of those and work that out. So this is great. This gives me a really good overview from a categorical perspective. But what if I want to look at my users and work out who is my top user? Well, we can use the exact same framework that we already have. But this time, we're just going to remove a few of these fields. So I'm going to take out product category. And I'm going to remove email for here. Now I've just got my total purchase amount, which is $4,075. But now I'm going to get email. And I'm going to drag email in to rows. And now I have each of my individual emails. And you can see next to each of them, there's a dollar amount for how much they actually went about purchasing. Okay, so now that I've got that, say I wanted to go about sorting this, you can sort in the pivot table, though it is a little bit clunky. So what I would ideally do from here is take this data out of the pivot table. So let's select all of the data that we've got here. Go the whole way down. Right click and go to copy. Let's add another worksheet. So we'll click on the plus and then we're going to go through and paste all of that data. Now I've got a whole list of all of my email addresses and the total purchase amount. And what I can do from here is I can run a filter. So I'll select the two columns, go to filter. Okay, so from here, what I can do is I can click on the arrow and then I could go ahead and choose largest to smallest. And what this would then show me is who my top purchases are for this particular period of time. So then I can say, how do I want to value these guys? Do I want to go back and find out how I acquired these users? Do these users have some kind of common types of you know demographics? Are they from a certain marketing campaign that we ran? And then see how I can then go about maximizing that because I know that then they're my higher value clients. Okay, I want to go back to the pivot table. I'm just going to name this one pivot table. So you all know. Now, one other thing that you can do with pivot tables, which is quite cool, is you can use columns. So I'll show you how you can use columns. So let's say I've got all of my email addresses here. I've got the purchase amounts. Say I want to work out for these purchases, how that looks in terms of how it's broken up by different brands. 
over where I've got brands in my pivot table fields, I can drag that into columns. And now you can see as that's done, it's actually broken up all of the different transactions and I'm able to see how many uh, Adidas purchases the users made, how many Nike they did, how many Mizuno, and then how that kind of goes across each of them and then is summarized overall in the total amount they spent. Another thing I might want to do with this is say this data then can get a little bit you know, hard to get through because there's so many records. Maybe I remove now email addresses from rows and then maybe I drag in product category into rows. Now I can have a look and say, okay, of the Adidas products that we sold, how many of them were? Okay, so now I can see of the Adidas products that we sold, how many of them were, you know, things like screen protectors, shoelaces, stickers, watches, how many ASIC ones in the same kind of regard. And we can go through and then work out and break that apart and see what is exactly going on on a much more granular level of detail. We can also do this with dates. We can do it with quantities. There's a range of different things that we can do as part of this pivot table. But I hope this is a good first up example of how you can go about using it. And guys, that's pretty much it for today. So I hope you've enjoyed this video as part of the Excel for Marketer series. If you have any questions, please get in touch, tom at toolswithtom.com. Make sure that you subscribe to Tools with Tom. Make sure you check out all my other videos and I will see you again.